All right, everyone, it's still early in the political campaign and anything could literally happen. Uh, right now, though, uh, let's be clear about something. This story is, it's good for Trump, but there's a caveat to it and nobody else is mentioning it. So I'm going to point it out so that people aren't ignorant. Uh, Trump has crushed it in fundraising. He's raised over 50 million so far, half of which was on <laughs> the first day of his campaign. He's raised a lot of money. Um, Fundraiser-wise, he, he seems to be doing better than a lot of Republicans, and it's trickling down to the RNC. They've raised about the same amount. Meanwhile, Biden and, and Buttigieg are the only Democrats so far, the mainline Democrats, that have released fundraising totals, and it, it pales in comparison. Biden's struggling to hit, like, what is it, 20 million, all told since he got in. Trump has dwarfed him. And some and booty judge there, which is... <laughs> Someone said that was a Maltese last name, which is pretty funny, I guess. Malta, <laughs> pretty hilarious. But uh, he's he's around the same level. He's raised a little bit less than Biden. Uh, but here, let me make the caveat here, though, very, very crystal clear. Trump is running as the only Republican. He's an incumbent. There are several dozen Democrats. So what's happening with the Democrats, the reason why they're being outraised so significantly is that no individual Democrat has a significant core fan base. There are so many Democrats in the field that, that have packed the field that all of that money that would normally, like a, a, a Democratic partisan is going to donate to a Democrat. But there are 20 different Democrats to donate to that they have to choose from. Towards the end of the race, you'll see more fundraising probably for whoever, you know, the no once there's a nominee, they're going to get injected with hundreds of millions of dollars of corporate cash because the Democrats have become the big money, like the bankster party, the corporate party, the multinational globalistic party. They've become, they've become, you know, what the left used to hate in the early Bush era about the Republicans. They've become basically no different from Bush or Mitt Romney with regards to money. They're beholden to corporate interests. The Democrats are now the, the party of billionaires, um, which is what they had been in the past. The Republicans under Reagan sort of took that over. Now the Republicans have gone back to more of the populistic front, the pre-neocon front, which I think is a good thing. And now we've got orange man bad because the globalists are fighting tooth and nail in a propaganda war to convince you that any sense of having a nation state, caring about the workers in this country, believing in free speech, especially online, is that's, that's fascism. It makes you a Nazi. They're doing that because they want to retain their multinational corporate stranglehold over the banking system, over your wallet, over your life, and over your children's lives. Uh, that's basically what it's about. And so they've decided to buy and sell the entire democratic field. But the thing is, if you've got so many candidates, if I'm, let's say I'm Joe Schmo Democrat, if you had a field like in 2016, you have basically two uh, mainline Democrats. You have two Democrats that combined have 95% of the support. You have Hillary Clinton as the as the standard liberal. Then you have way out there, you know, crazy ass far left Bernie Sanders, who now looks less crazy because there are people further to the left than him in the field. Uh, well, you know, there's you know, who am I going to donate to? It's one of these two people. But if you got 20 different Democrats, maybe I like Gabbard. Maybe I like Yang. Maybe I want to donate to hippie mom uh, Williamson. Maybe I want to donate to Biden. Or, there's so many different people that the money is being split between that naturally nobody is going to outraise Trump for a long time. This gives him an advantage, though. Let's not mince words. The longer that goes on that you have a very crowded Dem field and you only have one Republican running unopposed, essentially. Bill Weld is in there, but nobody gives a fuck about Bill Weld. The only person who gives a fuck about Bill Weld is Mitt Romney saying he's a swell guy because Mitt Romney's a globalist too. He makes all his money off multinational globalism because he doesn't care. He doesn't care if he sells the, the, if he goes vulture capitalist mode and he slaps a coat of paint on a defunct company and wants to sell it off to the highest bidder to make a return being a, a parasite on the U.S. economy. He doesn't care if it's a Chinese businessman that comes in and buys it. He doesn't care where they're from. He doesn't care if it's a North Korean firm that wants to buy it. He'll sell it. As long as he gets his fucking money, because that's all those those morons care about. Very funny how that happens. Hell, Trump's a multinationalist with regards to things. He just happens not to be a multinationalist with regards to a U.S. economy. He actually does, you know, economically speaking, want to put this country first. I think that's appropriate for the U.S. government to look out for U.S. interests. This makes me a fascist, according to some people. It's very interesting how that happens. Yeah, fuck the U.S. worker. Yeah, I've got to th think about people that are across the ocean before I think about my fellow man here. You know, screw me. 
screw everybody else, you know, screw common sense. But uh, he's crushing them in fundraising. It's good for Trump, but again, with the caveat that he's the only Republican to donate to. So if you're a partisan Republican, you're probably donating to Donald Trump. If you're a partisan Democrat, like like not specifically ideological, like far left or center left or something, you're just a partisan Democrat and you want to give your ten dollars. You got a whole plethora of different platforms to choose from. And at this early stage in the race, a lot of the support is soft. That is that these people can go up and down easily in the polls. I still say that Joe Biden has a has a pretty damn good chance of being there. Warren is is his main. Warren and, and Booty Judge are the two that are the biggest threats. Harris, I, I agree with Lionel Nation, by the way, his analysis yesterday of Kamala Harris. I don't believe she's likely to maintain the, the numbers that she's at, supposedly, according to the last two polls. I think it is a fluke based on a good debate performance. She could end up getting shoved back down. Warren will probably go attack dog on her. Warren and Harris will probably attack one another because they've got so much of a vote share between the two of them. And so I think one of them gets knocked out. I think Elizabeth Warren is the better debater overall the better speaker regardless of her baggage i mean uh, harris has some significant baggage too and i think that people i do disagree with him though i do think that people will care about some of the baggage they have the biden me too stuff again with, with lionel i agree that it's not an issue now but in the general if he becomes the nominee yeah it's going to become an issue it's going to become a huge optics issue uh if he makes it mainly because the republicans will exploit it they'll use it for propaganda i mean it's you know, it's, you can say it's benevolent propaganda, but that's basically what it is. Uh, Trump coming out ahead of, of, you know, probably all of the front-running Democrats in terms of fundraising. And the DNC, uh, aren't they still close to broke? They went broke a few years ago. They didn't have any money. They had a negative balance. They're probably still paying that off now. Nobody, the Democrats don't want to donate to the DNC because they see it as inept, vestigial, it doesn't make sense, and, and corrupt. Whereas the RNC is seen a little bit more fondly by Republicans, maybe not deservedly, but it seems that way, they're pulling in a lot more money than the Democrats, too. Now, remember, in the last election, the Democrats were flush, maybe not on the DNC level as much, but Hillary Clinton outraised and outspent Trump many times over. So far, Trump has come out ahead, and he already had how many tens of millions of dollars did he already have in his war chest on the day he announced? I think he had over a hundred million stored up in donations then, and he opened the purse strings a little bit during the midterms for certain Republicans, but he still had a very large amount of money. He's probably over the hundred million mark right now, um, and the race has just barely begun. You don't even know who the Democrats will have as a candidate. What he should do is rally and campaign and fundraise as continuously as possible, especially in the important, the swing states, the Rust Belt especially, and I would say, I would say New Hampshire. Look, I, I'm looking at the polls. Here's an important thing, and this could be the bane of Bernie, so to speak. Bernie Sanders is significantly behind Biden in New Hampshire, of all places. If he doesn't win New Hampshire, he's done. And Bernie Sanders is on the downswing in the polls. He's losing support. He's losing support because he's no longer the furthest left, so the leftists are gravitating to other people. He's not female, so that element of the far left. He, Bernie Sanders could barely pull in 40% in most parts of the country in the last election where he only had one other opponent, and his opponent was, it was legendarily weak, Hillary Clinton. In such a packed field where he has opponents that are actually further left than him, he can no longer compete. What gave him his shine was he was the far left candidate, and so far left individuals that are crazy flock to him. They've got other people to flock to now. Warren's just as far left as him. Well, not authentically, but she's branded herself that way. Kamala Harris is further left than he is. You've got all sorts of down-ballot candidates who are further left. And so if you're, you know, a socialist or a commie, as part of the Democratic Party is comprised of 10-15% of them are, are communists, it seems, uh, you're probably not voting for Bernie Sanders. No, you're probably voting for one of the down-ballot can candidates, or if you happen to be a third waiver, you're not, I mean, he's male, so you can't vote for him. Also, he's white. That's a problem in these days in the Democratic Party. No party for old white men, so so to speak, you know, sort of ideologically. Trump is crushing them. But it comes with a caveat, so don't get too cocky. When people say, well, Trump is a shoe, and no, he's not. He's got a good chance. I would favor him in 2020. Like, if the election were held today, yeah, I think he would win against, you know, pretty much anyone in the Dem field. The only viable opponents that he has aren't getting enough traction. Booty Judge, Buddy Geek, whatever you want to call him, is the only one with viability that I can see that could potentially oppose him. 
He'll exploit Warren's baggage. He'll exploit Biden's baggage. Bernie Sanders is basically toast. And I don't think Harris is likely to be there. She's got a lot of baggage, too. And then you've got people like Gabbard that are way down there who aren't going to... I mean, she's not going to be the nominee. It's impossible. Some people are trying to play it up. Well, she's the biggest threat to Trump. Yeah, but first you've got to actually give her a couple debate questions so people know who she is. But, uh, yeah, she did well enough to stay in the race, but not well enough to break through and, you know, get 5-6% of the vote. Unfortunate for her. That's about all. Peace out.